Number one tells us that there's a forest fire that has been burning for several days. The burned area, which is measured in acres, is given by this equation where D is the number of days since the area of fire was first measured. Complete this table. So um, if we plug in zero, so two to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. And then 4,800 times one is just going to be 4,800 for that. Then we'll plug in negative one. Just let me get this a different color here. So then when we plug in negative one, so two to the negative one is really one half because you bring the two down as a positive power. So then we're really doing half of 4,800, which is 2,400. And so really this is just dividing by another two because now if we do two to the negative two, that's the same as one over two to the positive two or one fourth which is just dividing a half by two again. So then this is gonna be 1,200, this is gonna be 600. And then if we plug in negative five, we'd be at 300 for negative four, so 150 for negative five. And of course you can use your calculator, you don't have to be able to do that in your head. So you can just plug in each of those to D. B says look at the value of the equation when d is equal to negative one. So if we take a look at when d is equal to negative one, what does this tell us about the area burned by the fire? So for d equals negative one, and remember this is days since the first measurement. So we're negative one days since the first measurement. So we would never say it as negative one days in real life. You'd say one day before the measurement was started. You know, so if we took the measurement on Wednesday, this would represent Tuesday, the day before, right? So D equals th negative three would be three days before. Um, and then how much area had the fire burned a week before um, it was measured? So a week, remember D is in days. So D equals days. So for one week, we're going to say D equals seven, but we want before. So this is going to be negative seven. And so you can just plug that in. So 4,800 times D to the, oops, not D, times two to the negative seven. And that is going to give you 37.5. Number two, the value of a home in 2015 was $400,000. Its value has been doubling each decade. If the value of the home in dollars... Um, write an equation for V in terms of D, okay? So V is the value of the home in dollars. Write an equation for V in terms of D. So V of D, right, equals your initial value. So in this case, 400,000, and then times the rate that it's increasing or the growth factor, really. And this is doubling, so this is gonna be two. So it's growing two times as much and then each decade. So D is for decade in this case. And what is V when D equals negative one? So then this would be 400,000 times two to the negative one, okay? So one doubling factor backwards, which really means dividing by two one time. So then this would be 200,000. Um, and then this would be one decade before 2015. So this would be 200,000 in 2005. So we would subtract 10 years. So remember that a decade is 10 years. 
So this is saying that in 2005, the house was worth 200,000. So when V, uh, what is the value of the home when D equals negative three? So now we're looking at 400,000 and then two to the negative third power. So this would be dividing by two, three times, okay? So you can type it in your calculator or you can divide by two, three times. So 400,000 divided by two is 200,000. Divided by two is 100,000. Divided by two again would be 50,000. And then this is going to be in, so instead of 2005, then we'd be at 19, whoops, 1995 would be another 10 years. And then 1985. So this is saying it's worth $150,000, or sorry, $50,000 in 1985. Um, a fish population P can be represented by the equation P equals 800 times one half to the T, where T is the time in years since the beginning of 2015. What was the fish population in the beginning of 2012? So this is three years before. So that means that your T is going to be negative three. So we'll do 800 times one half to the negative three. So then instead of having it three times, we're gonna be doubling it three times if you wanted to think of it like that, or you can type it in your calculator. But so doubling it three times would be 800, would go to 1600 the previous year, and then 3200 two years before, and then 6400 um, three years before. Number four, the area A of a forest in acres is modeled by this equation, where D is the number of decades since the beginning of 1950. Is the area of the forest increasing or decreasing with time? And we figure that out by looking at this growth factor. So is this number bigger than one or less than one? And when we do five divided by four, that's 1.25. So this is increasing because this is over one. So this really, if we think of it as a percent, means that it's 125% of its original. So that's more than 100%. So that's going to be increasing. And then what was the area of the forest in 1950? And remember, 1950 is our starting year. So then that's going to be that initial value of 5,000. You can also calculate it if you wanted to by typing it in as the initial year, meaning year zero. So you could type it in your calculator like this and it would give you back 5,000 as well. Then what's the area of the forest in 1940? So this is 10 years before or one decade before, right? And we're measuring in decades. So one decade before means that D is going to be equal to negative one. So then we would do 5,000 times five fourths to the negative one power. You can um, type this into your calculator and you would get 4,000. And then what was the area? Was the area of the forest less than 1,000 acres in 1900? Okay, so, um, and then explain. So you can figure this out multiple different ways, but 1900 is 50 years before 1950. Or, um, so then that's five decades. So 50 years equals five decades. And then it's before 1950, right? So this would be D is equal to negative five. So then you're gonna plug that into the equation, 5,000 times 5 fourths to the negative five power. And when you type that into your calculator, you'll get 1,638.4 acres. Number five. A population of mosquitoes, P is modeled by the equation P equals 1,000 times 2 to the W, 
where W is the number of weeks after the population was first measured. Find and plot the mosquito population for zero, one, two, three, and four. So we'll just plug in um, each of those into this equation, right? So when we plug in um, 1,000 times two to the zero, we get 1,000. So for this first one, we're gonna get 1,000. So at zero, we're at 1,000. For the second one, um, for number one, so when we plug in one into here, we're gonna get 2,000. So at one, we're at 2,000. At two, okay, so when you plug in two here, we would be at 4,000. So at two, it's 4,000. Then at three, when we plug in three into here, we're gonna be at 8,000. And then we'll plot that here. And then um, at four, we would be at 16,000 when we plug that in. So four will be up here at 16,000. So where on the graph do you see the 1,000 for the population? Okay, and that's right here on that vertical axis. So that's the vertical intercept. So on the y-axis. And then where on the graph can you see the two from the equation? So where are we seeing, um, where are we seeing this two happening? And the two, and maybe I'll write this in gray instead. Um, so the two that you're seeing, you're seeing this kind of vertical gap here doubling, right? So this width or this height kind of doubling each time. Because here it's only like 1,000, then it's 2,000, then it's 4,000, then it's 8,000 um, for that gap. So you can kind of say that how you want. I just called it the vertical gap um, is increasing by two times or it's doubling or it's two times taller each time. So however you kind of want to say want to say that, but the vertical number or the vertical gap is doubling. Number six, the number of copies of a book sold the year it was released um, was 6,000. Each year after that, the number of copies sold decreased by a half. Um, complete the table showing the number of copies the book sold each year. So we started at 600,000 copies. So then it decreased by half of that. So then we're at half of 600,000, which is 300,000. Half of that would be 150,000. Half of that would be 75,000. Then we wanna take a look at just writing it um, as an equation. And that's what B asks us to do is kind of this last part here. And so for that, we would have the number of copies sold Per, or based on the year, is going to be equal to the initial value, which was 600,000. The growth factor is by a half. It's decreasing, so it's half the size, and then per year. And you could write that in here too if you wanted. Then it says use your equation to figure out what... Um, the number of copies would be in year six. So then we're just gonna plug in six into this equation. And uh, when you do that, you get 9,375 copies being sold in the sixth year after a book was published. Number seven, the graph shows the population of butterflies, T weeks, since their migration began, how many butterflies were in the population when they started the migration? So initially, right? So this is like the initial value, which means that you're at T equals zero, which would be your vertical intercept here, okay? So then this is the initial butterfly population at 250,000. 
Then it wants to know how many butterflies were there in the population after one week. So then we look to one week here. And so at one week, there was 150,000. And then it wants to know two weeks. After two weeks, how much were there? So at two weeks, we see that it was 90,000. Now it wants us to write an equation um, for the population Q being the population after T weeks. And so what we got to figure out here when we're writing an equation, right? So we're going to do Q of W. And so we need that initial population, which we have, is 250,000. Then we're going to need to multiply that by the growth factor. Um, and then that'll go to the T our time period. So what we need here is this growth factor. And we figure out the growth factor by doing a new population over an original. So we want to take a new measurement over an, an original. So we can just take this first new one at 150,000, okay, and divide it by the one right before it, the original at 250,000, and then that will give us our growth factor, which in this case, so if you wanna do it as a decimal, it's 0.6, okay? If you wanna do it as a fraction, you could you know, cancel out all these zeros, and we've got 15 over 25, and then 15 and 25 both divide by five, so we'd end up with 3 fifths. So either way, whatever you want to put in here, if you want to put it as a fraction of three-fifths or a decimal of 0.6, um, either one is fine. But so then there's that equation.